really excited to be here. Want to want to thank uh, Villanova and their staff. Uh, it's been you know great so far. Uh, it looks like uh, you know they're obviously putting on a great show, and and we're happy to be here. Uh, and congratulations to the, the all four teams that are are here. Uh, exciting for all the teams and programs, and um, you know it's a big statement that that you make the tournament and. Clearly, we're one of those people. We, we're excited to be here. Um, we came a long way to be here. Uh, and uh, obviously, we're excited to play. And we'll open it up to questions. Uh, please state your name and affiliation, and we'll get a microphone to you. We have one down here from Mel. Mel Greenberg. Tammy, when you say a long way, when you took Washington, they were like one of the basement teams in America. So. What all drove you that way? Because you probably could have picked a million places with your little history. Yeah. Well, first off, uh, you know, just got my start late in my career. I, I took the long path. You know, so many players and so many coaches uh, get jobs way early in their careers. I'm real grateful for taking a little bit longer. I feel like I was really prepared and, and got my first job at Northern Colorado for four years and loved that experience. Um, Washington State came open, and quite honestly, you know, Texas education, you know, I didn't even know where the state of Washington probably was at the time. Um, and, and the Pacific Northwest was pretty brand new to me. But what drew me was, you know, sitting in a meeting in, in a room with Pat Chun, the AD, obviously knowing Kirk Schultz, who was the president, is the president uh, at the time and, and is there now, and, and their commitment to trying to make you know, women's basketball relevant and uh, had a pathway. You know, we did it in four years at Northern Colorado. Wanted the challenge of, of playing at a little bit higher level, having to recruit a little bit longer athlete and, and again, just compete against the best athletes in, in the country. And, and uh, the Pac-12 was really, um, I mean, it is to me, the best league in the country, top to bottom. Uh, the coaches that are there, the tradition, rich programs of winning. Um, but honestly, the thing that drew me to Washington State were the people in the room that said, this is our vision and we'll give you the time and the space to make, make, you know, make us relevant in women's basketball. And uh, they have done that. They've, and uh, we've gotten really um, fortunate to bring in some really great players. Down here in the second row. Colin Clark, Spokesman Review in Washington. Uh, kind of on that, uh, the, the on paper, the transformation of the program is pretty, pretty stunning to look at, the, you know, the history of it. Uh, if you were to explain to a, to an outsider just kind of a, a, a brief, uh, you know, explanation of, of what happened, what turned, uh, you know, what, what would you say? Well, again, I mean, when, when you're asked a lot of questions about your program and, and even now not having not won a first-round game, you know, I do m make sure everybody understands we've only been to four of these in, since 82. So... Uh, the track record, we haven't been to very many. And clearly, um, you know, the explanation would be, you know, I, I think things are possible. I would tell you that. Like, we were the bottom of the barrel in, in the pack. It's a, hard, it's a hard place to recruit to. It's a hard job. Um, and it doesn't matter. If you get the right people and the right fit, uh, you, get, you get players that want to be great, that um, are willing to commit to being great 365 days a year, uh, Got to get maybe a little bit lucky through hard work uh, on getting some special and unique players. But I think the way we did it was it didn't have to be fast. Our, we built a culture. We got great cult character people in our program. They were the foundation piece. And then we've built a little bit more talent on top of them uh, now for five years in a row. And, and now when we bring players in, it's, a, it's really a player-led culture. The, I don't have to be the behavior cop anymore, you know, the, the – Seniors and the upperclassmen kind of have everybody in line and, and uh, teach the young ones how to be and how to train and how to sound like a championship team. Questions for Coach, Ed, Coach Etheridge. Uh, seeing Char Charlize get an honorable mention, the All-American nod, I, I know you've said that she's pretty much a, kind of a star when she got here, but how have you seen her uh, just improve her game and, and kind of grow as a person from, from year to year? and and uh, uh, what has she, she become at this point in her career? Right. Well, she's just so much more than an offensive player. I mean, she, I think she's one of the best defensive players I've ever been around as well. But her mind and her commitment to the game and her IQ and her feel and, and then just her 
leadership abilities within the team. You know, she's different than her sister. Her sister was a lot more bite, <laughs> and, bar and, and Charlize is uh, much more, and not in a bad way, Crystal will be mad if I say it, but much more likable as a, she, she's not going to rub too many people wrong, which I don't know that that's good or bad. You need a little bit of everything, I think. But, um, you know, what I really appreciate about Charlize is, and, and what you have to understand about international she goes back and plays five on five she's done much more five on five uh, and she's on the national team she she's rarely really just unlike a lot of americans they spend all their time shooting threes or being in the gym and and just doing certain individual things you know she's never really had those things she's much more of a of a team player and so we we got our hands on her last summer that we were able just to go, these are the things we want you to work on and, and getting in the gym with her, you know, one-on-one -on -one or just a, a, a small groups. Um, and it really improved, I think, her footwork, kind of her ability to get the ball to the right spot every single time she shoots it, you know, and I think her work ethic obviously is off the charts. She showed up every day and is just as solid as she can possibly be. But I think what you saw is just her numbers got better because she really just worked on her individual game over the summer. and. We've got to mix that, you know. She's she's going to go back and be on the national team again, but we obviously want her to continue to grow her individual game and get her as pro ready as we possibly can. Down here to Dan. Hi, Dan Gelson, Associated Press. How are you? Um, I have a couple of questions, but jumping off that, the pro game, um, thirty percent of players drafted um, into the WNBA are only making the team. There's no more Russia as an opportunity. Do you see the pro opportunities for women changing or shrinking? And are you concerned, or do you feel, you know, things are fine? How do you feel about the state of professional basketball for women? Yeah, I mean, I'm probably the worst one to ask about that. Uh, but, um, you know, hopefully the league, the WNBA, will expand in the next couple of years. And obviously that's not a, a lot of jobs, but it is almost impossible to make a, a team now. Uh, they just don't retire that fast, as many as they're coming out. And the league is so good and so, so solid. You have to be so good. I think if you get Charlize in a camp, regardless of what her draft choice would be, she's going to impress people and, and, you know, make a team. But she's got to do that, you know, in the coming years. Um, but I think, you know, if you're willing to go places, the leagues are still out there. It's just a matter of if you get picky and, and only want certain things and if you only want a certain amount of money or things like that, I think you're going to be limited. But I think there's opportunities out there um, for players to go and experience professional basketball. And the better you do at whatever league you're at, you're going to have a chance to go to bigger and well more well-paying jobs. And also in that vein, how have you seen the NIL deals? Has it affected your team, your program much? And, and have you seen it? impact in ways you like or don't like women's basketball yeah we're we're really not af affected too much so far I mean it's gonna it's gonna be a big issue for us going forward you know we have a lot of internationals and uh, you have to you know they can't completely make money while they're in the states here they have to be o at home to to make the money and so you know you have to be a little bit creative in 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 ways to get money to them so it's still a work in progress for us, but uh, we've got to be in that game somewhat, and uh, we certainly need, um, you know, just like everybody at Washington State, the, the programs are really, you know, we're going to have to understand NIL, and we're going to have to, to, like I said, get in that game. All right, last question. I'll pass the mic. Can your team sing? <laughs> and if so, who do you want leading the charge when <laughs> Shania Twain starts playing in the locker room? Well, I want Shania to lead the, the song, and we'll be a great backup for her. And uh, we definitely want the music and not a cappello because uh, they're not shy about singing. And uh, you'll hear all different tunes, I think, and, um, and loudness. But uh, I don't know that I would say it's great, but, but it's been a, a blast to, to watch them enjoy the whole process of that. But Shania, Shania is our lead singer. A auntie, like uh, like uh, like. You, Ula calls her Auntie Shania. <laughs> Could you uh, kind of describe the team's mindset and how they approach the Pac-12 tournament and how much are you trying to you know, kind of emulate that, that approach coming into this tournament? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the good thing for us is we haven't had to change too much. We, we were actually playing pretty good basketball 
all Pac-12 Pac season. And um, we had some slip-ups and lost nine games in our league, four of those when, when Charlize wasn't with us. And getting her back into the swing of, of the games, um, you know, we, we slipped up a few games that we probably had won. Uh, but that's the nature of our league. We, those four we lost were all home games. So you wonder what if, if we had had Charlie. So sometimes I think our record of 10 losses is a little, is a little deceiving. Uh, but we've been in, we were in every game other than the Stanford game. Stanford kind of blew us a, away. But every other game we had the ability to win or lose. And um, it really, we were playing very well. We beat UCLA on the last swing had a 19-point lead against USC and, and somehow lost that um, and then went into the tournament. But we were playing good basketball. You know, we didn't play great against Cal, I don't think, but we first round, you scrape by, you do whatever you can to succeed. And, and I think we played one of our best games of the year against Utah. Um, and obviously that – I think the most impressive thing that our team did was, you know, you play a game at 6 o'clock at night and you have another game the next day at 6. And then you have another game the next day at 6. And – you have a success of, you know, beating Cal. Now all of a sudden, oh yeah, you get to play Utah with no practice, and then you beat, you know, you beat Utah, and you get back to the hotel at nine o'clock at night, and you're on a sky high, you know, feel, and somehow you got to come back down and and manage and scout and and play Colorado the next day, and so that turnaround, it was just so impressive of how our team could compartmentalize and stay in the moment and enjoy that process, and then turn around and lock in and be great in a, you know, a film session scout and get themselves mentally and physically ready to play a big game the next night. So that's, but that's who they've been. They've been, we've been great on the road all year. So it's not like we have to come in here and go, how do we fix ourselves and be a good road team? We've kind of proven uh, we don't have to change our spots too much. We, we are who we are and, and we got to show up and, and be really solid tomorrow night. Any other questions for Coach Etheridge? I think we're good. Thank you, Appreciate Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.